willkommen zurück auf dem Landschaftspark Nord. Hallo, everyone on the stream. This is Sona. And we're back into the action. Uh, that's uh, a picture of some roadworks. Oh, Burrito with Doom is back, boys. My name is Sona. I'm joined by Scandal. We're back here with the ESL Meisterschaft Grand Final Days. We're into the third and final match between Iguana Esports and uh, Euronics Gaming. And I have some food in front of me, so I'm going to let Excalibur talk while I nom down on this lasagna. I assume Burrito of Doom is here to uh, bring back those replays that we had, looking at some impactful moments on the last game. He's uh, he's saying some stuff. Not sure what he's saying, but I'm, I, I, I believe he's leading into some sort of replay. Das Take it away, Burrito. There we go, Burrito. Wasser. Shush. There we go, Burrito of Doom. Now, this is the uh, potential. I think it's where... We, we have the 1v1 between um, Phones and Kretz. Yeah, he's uh, just looking to push him in in that mid lane. Oh, no, it's the cross. Cross snipe arrow. Sets up this early siege in the mid lane. Also gives uh, Victor that early lead. Now we're going to look at the second of the game. I think this is going to be after directed cam goes a little bit nuts. We might be looking at the um, still the same the same one. Oh, no, it's that 1v1. It's the 1v1 between Kretz and... Uh, and uh, phones, and that's just the uh, Kled picking off that singular kill there, able to uh, lead that 1v1 very nicely. Some more crazy director cam. So this is um, actually the fight where we see f they get the Mountain Drake and lose a couple of members, and Iguana's here just distracted for the entire time. Phones is getting inhibitor to it at this point. Curtain Call comes down just to hold them around. Eventually, out of this fight, Phones will get the inhibitor as well, but all that Euronics are trying to do is keep people around. Look at this. No one has got back to base yet. Kex tries to get back in the bush, but isn't able to escape either, and getting that inhibitor is so powerful for Euronics. So uh, that's Burrito of Doom. I mean, thank you for all of those replays, Burrito. You've been incredibly wonderful to uh, to watch with your great hair. And uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for being here, buddy. Um, my tea's pretty good, by the way. I'm enjoying my cup of tea. H have you got a cup of tea, Sona? No, I haven't. I got a lasagna instead because um, I had breakfast about seven o'clock when I woke up, and it's now I want to say twelve-ish. It's one one o four. Wow, it's one o'clock. Holy moly. Um, and so I, I got some leftover lasagna from last night. It's pretty good. Did you make the lasagna or is it like a No, Jill, Jill made the lasagna. Ah, great. Yeah. Wonderfully talented. That she is. I have a chocolate crunch. I think uh, I think Emily's making some soup though, so. Mm, that will be super. Hey, Lamau! <laughs> hey, Lamau. Um, this this raffle thing is uh, I don't know, buddy. Just go and click on it. Uh, I think I think basically you've I got. I think it's the IEM Oakland raffle, but that's expired. But we yeah, don't have any way of like. Stopping unfortunately, Mubot I don't I don't it. have control of Mubot, so I believe it's from the IEM Oakland. Uh, you can get all the stuff that was on screen, but I think that's pretty much ended now. So, I know, so... There is a specific one for Meisterschaft as well. Um, when the adverts come in, there, there's a little link that comes up. You guys can type in that link and enter the raffle for Meisterschaft. So. Yeah. So I think there's another raffle going on. Sorry about the IEM Oakland raffle, guys. Um, apologies. That's uh, unfortunately it's uh, out of our control for what we could do for it. That it is. Now we are going to get into the third game between these two teams. Iguanas get blue side, and uh, Euronics have red. I assume this is Euronics pick, so they've decided to take red. It might be Iguanas pick. Iguanas may pick red first. Either an Alistair band away here from Cuckoo. And Zyra and Syndra, the first two bands coming out from Euronics. So uh, Zyra Syndra has been basically a staple set of bands from that second game for Euronics. They're actually going to have the similar bands all over. Alistair has actually been banned away by Iguana here, despite the fact that they were the ones that were... Oh, sorry, no, that, 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 that wasn't the ones. They were the ones that sort of lost against it last game. So yes. they don't want to face that Alistair. Sorry, my bad. And actually, they're going to go straight for that Rek'Sai lock. And again, this could just be a very similar draft phase, Sona. That it could. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if we see the gym pick up here. I've got quite a bit of food in my mouth, so Excalibur, take it away. Yeah, so Jin and uh, Elise were the first two picks that we saw last time. Looks like we're going to respond for the same with Euronics. The Ivern ban, by the way, is uh, essentially uh, because of the new Windspeaker's build path for Ivern. He's very strong from the jungle. You may not think it, but his ability to basically act like a second Karma just makes him so strong on the top of that, especially when you've got sort of a very late game orientated carry on your team so that's why ivan comes through also he does a lot of damage with that e as well 
So on this rotation now, I expect maybe to see that Ash Karma lock in once more. I mean, we could just basically see exact same over for Iguana, unless they want a real change up of strategy. Um, the Ash Karma seems like the most sort of logical lock in based on how they played last game. They're potentially thinking about the Corky into the Oriana early on here. They don't think the Victor was impactful enough. They don't need to pick up the Ash, but maybe the Karma would be more. Um, the Karma would be sort of more topical at this point, or rather sort of more key at this point. Uh, maybe because they don't want to give that away over to the fact that there's an Oriana already on the side of Ironix. So if they are going to go for anything, I would say that the Karma is likely one of these lock-ins at this point in time, especially because Arfen is so uh, wonderfully gifted at playing that particular. Mm -hmm. And we are These just would be really interesting picks. I, I would be surprised to see the Zillion pick, in all honesty. It's not something we see very commonly from the German leagues. And it's actually just going to be Ash Zillion locked in. So Jernak's wow. taking Zillion up towards the mid lane. It's going to be Ash for the AD carry. You know, next need to work out how they're going to respond to this. They do still have that Elise on the cards if they want. Probably don't want to pick top lane yet. They will try and lock in their support as well, you'd assume. So what, what I sort of have to think about here is with Alistair gone, do they potentially take the karma away from Iguana or do they need to really focus in on that ability to dive, like taking a support that will facilitate their diving potential? Because that's kind of where they had a lot of their success with last game. They don't mind locking in the mid laner because I actually think that phones being on the Kled was kind of like that pivotal point for, uh, for uh, Euronix. It kind of shut Kex down uh, and also allowed them to use that dive potential with the Kled's charge. So... I mean, I'd, be, I'd probably end up seeing the support and the jungler locked in. Like you said, the, the Elise is still on the cards. But maybe they change their game strategy. I, I feel like it worked so well for them last game. I don't think they need to. But I definitely feel like taking a tanky support is better. And it looks like we could see Tom Kent. So definitely the Elise is like what we suggested. was likely going to be that sort of jungle lock-in. And Tom Kent is now the lock-in for... Um, Euronix in probably that support position. Yeah, it just keeps your AD carry safe. You can always devour him, get him out of the action. And if you think that uh, the Jin is going to be the target of a lot of fights, it means that you can just get him away. We used to see Tom Ketch, of course, incredibly strong when Devour gave you movement speed running away from the opponent. Still pretty powerful. And as chat says, Kench has been unbenched. He is into the action here. And Iguana have to decide what they want to pick into this. So what do they end up picking this? Because they've got the Zillion, which kind of alludes to the fact that they are really putting on all of the eggs in the Ash basket, unless they're taking a carry top laner, which I doubt. They're kind of going towards having Zillion be that resurrect tool. They're really putting everything into HeQ's uh, lineup here. Zillion provides a lot of um, sort of control potential in a team fight. But uh, by having a carry top laner, it makes Zillion infinitely more useful. And Sona, Arfan has locked in the th that, the yeah. Thresh. <laughs> locked in that indeed. It's the Thresh, Arfan. Known for this about a season ago, he was one of the best Thresh players in Europe. He queues locked in the Kennen as well for Ket, so it is more of a carry top laner. And this is a very exciting lineup coming out from Iguana Esports. Picks that we don't tend to see. Um, perhaps with the new patch, you know, Thresh has risen up to favor a little bit with the coach of Colossus. Euronix need to decide how they're going to pick into this Kennen top. So what you're seeing from this competition because like you said Kled does not work as well here for Euronix this is probably what they were waiting for should Poppy or um, Maokai have been locked in phones would have locked in Kled by pop locking in the, the uh, Kedden they are basically saying if they go for Poppy here they are submitting to their early laning phase being bad but once the uh, a couple of items come out here for um, Cuckoo Oh, sorry, for, rather for phones, he should be able to split push very effectively versus the Kennen. Kennen will not do enough damage in the 1v1 potential unless he goes down a Blade of the Ruin, Ruin King path. Now, don't flame me, chat. I have seen this. Two or three AP items picked up by the Kennen. Eventually wants to maintain his split pushing pressure. will move into a Blade of the Ruin King. Better 1v1, worse 5v5. That's kind of how it goes. Uh, and now the compositions have been locked in. I better run over them pretty quickly. What you're basically doing here for Iguana is saying most of this is a control-based team fight looking to set up Ash. Everything here is designed to work around Ash once more. They're going back to the books saying work around the Ash Arrow. Uh, even if we miss the Ash Arrow, we can rush in with the Kennen that facilitates a lot of AoE stun, add the uh, Zillion to the mix that keeps Ash safe in some regards, and also gives huge AoE stun potential. And then Ash can work from the back of all of this hard CC coming down for her team. So uh, I think there's a lot of sort of a play around Ash composition coming out from Iguana again here. It is, but Tom Kench works so well into that because 
you do just stop any arrows that land. You know, if an arrow lands, you just devour the target. If cannon comes in, you just devour the target. Tom Kench, happy to sit in the middle of those those sort of slicing maelstroms, in the middle of those ultimates, to allow his AD carry or his mid laner to survive through the devour. Yeah, so I agree with you in that sense. It saves a singular target. But what, what they are bringing to the table with this composition is they're not actually really looking for total singular target domination. What they're looking for is team-wide team fight control. So even if Tom Kench devours a pick, it's just one less threat that they don't have to deal with when using all of that AoE control they bring to the squad. And then Ash is just able to walk through slowly controlling the pace with those frost shots. And even when Tom Kench undevours his target, um, you know, you're able to then just follow up very nicely. So I, I actually don't mind the composition. <laughs> nice over lazy yourself. That's, I, I, not, I actually, me. That's not me. <laughs> definitely not us. Um, I actually really like the way that Iguana have, have worked this, even with the Tom Kench locked in, um, because actually, regardless of ta who Tom Kench devours, it doesn't actually matter too much, because the actual overall idea for Iguana here is to basically control as much of the team fight in an AoE area as possible to facilitate Ash, especially with Runans, to just go to town. Well, we are in to the action, on to Summoner's Rift for the third and final time between Iguana Esports and Euronics Gaming. Winner of this goes through to the finals. The loser goes home. We assume. We think it's a best of three. <laughs> we it assume. Could be, it could be a best of five, but I think just that even time-wise, it's got to be a best of three. It's got to be. Anyway, Iguanas, as you say with this composition, or Doran's blade on Kex is what you expect him to build in towards this poppy. Looking perhaps to play more of an impact in team fights than the poppy is able to, but Poppy pretty powerful into the cannon, very good at trading as she gets later on and can stop that cannon split push pretty easily. Yeah, so what actually, like you said, she'll be able to eventually, as the game goes on, push cannon in quite nicely. The cannon will still be able to clear ways, but no, he's not going to be a damage threat to Poppy, especially when Poppy picks up a couple of defensive items. What Poppy's bringing here is a similar aspect to Kled. It really facilitates this tower dive composition. You've got a slight ball delivery system coming through for Magi Felix. Magi Felix not taking the uh, the shield first, opting for that command attack, and is going to get punished ever so slightly by some early bombs coming down from Genax. It's a and little bit you... of a surprise. Most people take command protect first on the Oriana. Yeah, so... so... Um, well, you know, people think that Kennen does, does a lot of damage. Kennen doesn't do a lot of damage, especially to tanky targets. Kennen is very good at dealing damage to squishy targets, so Magi Felix and Cedrium will be particularly suspect to that. But against um, a Poppy, Kennen just will do nothing. As soon as Poppy picks up two or three magic resist items, you know, Kennen will just probably not have the damage unless he's super far ahead, regardless. Heal Q and Arthur will push this lane in once again. Tom Kench doesn't provide any counter push, really. He can just try and lick a tongue his way through those uh, minions. Maybe Cuckoo's just been playing a lot of Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. It's just like, look guys, I want to cosplay as a Pokemon this game. It was either Kennen or Tom Kench. It was either going to be that Pikachu or going to be the lick a tongue. And he decided to go for the lick a tongue this game. Well, you know, I I'm, guess. I, by the way, I'm so tilted at the moment. So I, um, I bought a, a new Nintendo like DS, right, the XL one, and Pokemon Sun and Moon because we're traveling next week quite a lot on like some long plane journeys, and it's going to arrive on the day that I fly out, but I'm not going to be here because I'll have already had to get to the airport by that time. So that's pretty tilty. That's why I was looking for a gaming laptop, you see, because um, I want to invest in something because I travel quite a lot. I want to invest in something that I can play games on while I'm going. And I, at the moment, all I've got is Hearthstone, and I love Hearthstone, but you got like, Vainglory as well, man. Yeah, I can't play Vainglory with, with poor internet, which you can do with Hearthstone. That's um, true. So when I'm traveling like on plane, I, planes have Wi-Fi. So when you're traveling on like plane Wi-Fi and stuff, um, you can't play Vainglory because the ping's too bad. But you can, however, play uh, Hearthstone. So that's fantastic. Or offline games, which you get a lot with your gaming laptop you've been thinking about. Kex has pushed this lane in. Phones underneath the turret takes a bit of pain, but we'll just back away as he knows the obvious is coming up through the river. Uh, or he at least assumes it's happening because he's already sliced away. Here comes Obvious though, looking for the cocoon. Electrical Surge, sorry, uh, Lightning Rush gets that cannon out of the fray. Yeah, the uh, very difficult to put pressure early on in cannon with that Lightning Rush, just able to get out of uh, 
get out of dodge, as you like to say, very, very quickly. Again, this laning phase is going to be slightly less tilted towards uh, pushing in the, the Jin as it was previously, but Ash will push naturally a little bit quicker than Jin can in the early game, especially with Arfan sometimes looking to flay the wave. So we, we expect this to get shoved towards the Tarn Kench and the Jin, as we did see in the previous two games. You've got to say this is this three games where Cedrin has played Jin every game, and uh, Q has played Ash every single game as well. So that's the only pick, sort of, apart from the jungle picks as well, actually, that kind of remain static throughout the whole thing. Everybody else has had some sort of change across this best of three series, which we assume is a best of three. Uh, we're still not sure. Uh <laughs> we haven't been told by admins otherwise, so hopefully it is just the best of three. Um, yeah, I was, I was going to talk about that. I think a lot of the reason we haven't seen the sort of AD carries changing around that much is both the AD carries are comfortable on these picks, and also with the ban, be ban priority being the way it is, Banning out an AD carry loses you priority on other bands. So like you're you're losing out that Syndra ban, or you're losing out that Zyra ban that you're focusing, or the Gangplank ban we saw in the first game. It, it, banning out AD carries doesn't make as much sense as banging out other picks that are just inherently more powerful. I got some questions in chat, by the way, before we because uh, this is a bit of a sort of dull f in, phase of the game. Interactive stream. It's fine. Yeah, interactive. How did we get into casting? I was a kind of player in the UK scene about four years ago when you could be a pro player at gold and um, I went to a tournament got knocked out in the semi-finals and started casting from there how did you start Sona? Uh, I just did my friends streams we used to play a lot like have little scrims between me and nine of my other friends and then one day we had too many people so I said oh, I'll just stream it and cast it and went from there as well we both actually started off like our in inverted commas professional casting career on the same job so it did indeed. And also someone asked how pros get skins. I'm not sure. I'm not a pro. Um, I believe they unlock them mostly like the rest of us. I know Riot provide unlocked accounts for players. Yes, guys, yeah. yeah. Oh, here's the slicing mouse from the top lane. Bones pushing forward, trying to keep his verdict. Kex away. We'll knock the cannon back. That's good trading in by Kex as he pushes Bones back once again. 10 CS up now in that top lane. Yeah, so Riot uh, LCS players, I believe, get unlocked accounts, or players that come over to different regions for tournaments definitely get unlocked accounts. So uh, as far as it, that's all I know. So uh, couldn't tell you any more than that, I'm afraid. And uh, so people are asking about why Vayne isn't being picked if she's the best AD carry in the game. Vayne is very situational in the sort of composition you want to run her into uh, because she's such short range and you need to keep her very safe to be able to actually win out fights. So a lot of higher level teams won't pick Vayne because they know how easy it is to catch her out. Hook onto Cedrian. Here's Arfan. Plays her back. There's the Devourer we were talking about. Kaku just gets himself out towards safety. That's all you need to do with Cedrian. Even if the hook lands, you can just devour him and uh, take him back to turret. Have we ever thought about casting people's weddings? Um, I don't think we'd get hired. I don't know if we'd get hired for that, so I'm How would you do Oh, and she's put the ring on his finger! Big moves there. It's a cracker of a wedding. Here we go. The bride yeah, and, uh, is a little you bit could tell, drunk. You could tell that ring putting on technique was thoroughly practiced by the groom there. He knew which finger he was aiming for. I mean, great job by the groom. Really is. I mean, and those vows. I mean, he was uh, really playing to the critical weakness of the bride's mother. Really played into that. I mean, got to say, well prepared by the groom. Who's going to take some damage? There's the deadly flourish as well. Arfan devoured did it. Spat back towards the turret. Takes up a tower shot. Flashes away and just escapes with a sliver of HP. Kaku trading into, uh, sorry, Kex trading into phones here as well. Kex has gone Hextech Gunblade, so probably building up towards the proto belt you would expect. Fennec oh, able gang. to sneak his way in. He's obvious as well, and Fennec sees the danger, flashes away, dodges the cocoon. IGE hadn't quite hit that level six on eight EQ, so it didn't have the Enchanted Crystal Arrow for the lockdown. Yeah, he was. Uh... Waiting on that one in terms of mana values, didn't have that mana to complete it, and he, he wasn't able to follow up. If he had had it, potentially they would have stuck around, but uh, with the Elise turning up at the right time, obviously being very good at making counter ganks happen, was not the case. Looks with the Spectre's Cow. This, when the Spectre's Cow get finished, by the way, everybody, this instantaneously becomes a little bit of an easier lane for Poppy. Um, until she picks up the Spectre's Cow, she was going to have a tough time. Because Kennen's actual magic damage application is not consistent enough, you will always get that uh, health regeneration that the Spectre's Cow provides if you take magic damage. Um, so, obviously, uh, Phones is going to be able to regenerate quite nicely throughout this lane. He's probably not going to be pressured too hard by Kennen from this point onwards without ganks. Yeah, I think Kex with Proto Belt can do a little bit of work, but as you say, Phones now got his magic resist, expect him to get Mercury Treads next probably as well. Uh, will just be very difficult for Kex actually to get too much down. Can try and continue to push up the lane. 
We saw Fennec trying to get towards a Magic Felix, but unable to connect with a gank at the moment. And that's kind of been the story of this game. Both junglers trying to set up. We saw Obvious up towards the top side, Fennec down towards the bottom lane. They just weren't able to get the ganks off that they perhaps were expecting to in the early game. Looks like we've got Frenix setting up for a large wave pushing into this top bot lane tier 1. A teleport coming through as well. Yep. They really want this tier 1 tower in the bot lane. First brick is incredibly important. There's going to be a flash over the wall. Here they go. Onto Cuckoo. Locked up. Also up towards the top side. We saw the Devour onto the Jin. A great arrow onto him as well. And Cedria will fall to Kex. Cuckoo's going to go down as well. And IGE say hello. They get the kills in the bottom lane. They'll get the first brick as well. Assuming they have a big enough wave, which they do. IGE pull the trigger off the first play of the game to secure themselves a hefty gold lead. Yeah, that was a, a really nicely coordinated play coming out for Iguana there. Knowing that they wanted to play around that bot lane tier one, don't actually end up capitalizing on it with a Drake. And actually, Zillion was pretty happy to just clear those waves in the mid lane with those bombs. So uh, really nicely coordinated, playing off the back of that Ash Arrow. They had a huge wave that they'd stacked up to make that work. Very impressive stuff from Iguana there. I'm going to ask a couple of more questions in chat. Do I get paid much for casting or is it different for other competitions? Uh, I don't know what your value of much is, so I can't answer that. But um, we, we get paid... paid enough to do it as a full-time job. Yeah, I could do it as a full-time job. Um, and we get paid differently per different competition. Yes, we don't get paid the same rate. Um, someone asked why we don't see any assassins like Kha'Zix. Unfortunately, the problem with Kha'Zix is that he basically... Um, is like most assassins and, and really relies on, uh, in large portion on snowballing, even though Riot tried to take that away from the assassin's kit. So if you get to a game like this where kills are very low, it's actually just better to bring utility to, to facilitate someone who's going to do with, well with farm without having to, to sort of uh, capitalize off the back of that. So yeah, I think you don't see many assassins because most of them do well at sort of roaming and kills and with the high amount of vision that you see in competitive play, you don't often see that much work with assassins. Person call from Cedrion will connect a couple of shots onto Kex. He's trying to dodge his way around. His obvious as well. Final shot doesn't connect, but Kex did not have flash. Used it earlier on, which means that IGE were going to lose that member. They took top lane tower though as Arfan and EQ came up towards the top side of the net to secure that alongside Fennec. A pay for it with one turret going down, and it's only a Cloud Drake as well here if Euronix decides to get that dragon, so they won't be too worried uh, about losing that Drake as IGE just back away from that top side. Yeah, and they're going to get that tier 1 top lane. They will respond with the tier 1 in the bot lane, but it took a long time to get that done. At least went for that mobility boot build again as well, Sona. Uh, and actually, it worked very well in the first game for Iguana because... Oh, sorry, for, for Euronix, because they were trying to move at least around the map as much as possible. They did end up losing that game, but at least she was looking to have an impact early on. When you go mobility boots, you are sending a message that you're looking to gank as much as possible. And unfortunately, obviously, it's kind of been outdone by Frenic at this point in time. Um, and it's kind of fallen ever so slightly behind. So yeah, I'm, in I'm interested as to why uh, sort of going mobility boost is such a risky game. I, I, I much would have preferred a sort of a standard build path and try to look for those counter ganks. But with mobility boots, you're looking to be as proactive as possible. And unfortunately, hasn't able to make that happen thus far. I think it's just what obvious tends to do. We've seen him build mobility boots for quite a while. Uh, did I say it was a cloud drake? I definitely meant it was an ocean drake. I don't know why I thought it was a cloud for some reason. I, I actually genuinely get confused between those two symbols sometimes. It's just especially when you're looking at the minimap. Yeah, sometimes I only looked at the minimap. But that, that's some... an ocean. So that actually plays really into IGE's hands. Uh, being able to see to a little bit better, you get all that extra regeneration. Zillion is known for his roaming plays as well. Uh, almost completed his Rod of Ages. So now expect to see him perhaps pushing up that lane into the Oriana and then maybe trying to impact the other lanes as well. Although with both turrets being down, makes it a little bit more difficult for him. I still don't know if I'd like the Siege from Euronix, though, especially playing into the Kennen, because what Kennen is doing is basically like a little bit more damage, but high, a little bit more volatile version of Maokai that Iguana pulled out in the first game. Because even if the Ash Arrow misses on a Siege, you can always now have that backup engage of a Flash or Protobelt Kennen ultimate. Looks like we've got a gank coming out and the well, Thresh doing what Thresh does best. Abyssal Voyage in. Phones here as well. Has teleported to join the fight. Knocked up by Frenic. That's the Keeper's Verdict available for phones as well. Not going to be able to get too much out of it. And Euronix just don't get the fight they want out of it. Kex still has teleport up in a few seconds. With the dragon being down, there's not really much Euronix can take out of this fight. I really love the Thresh here against the Jin because what it actually does is Jin classically 
will like to target a specific person with multiple uh, iterations of his shot from the curtain call. What Thresh does is allows you to drag someone right out of that a long distance, keeping them slightly safe, and then Thresh able to then get in front and tank that up. So I really like this from uh, Iguana, especially Arthur and playing this Thresh particularly. He hasn't actually been looking to make too many picks. Keeper's um, verdict doesn't hit, does knock the minions away though. HQ blocked up there is the Chrono Shift as well to keep him alive. There's a lantern available if he wants to get out of there. The Shockwave though will take him down. Down. Didn't take the lantern quickly enough, the HQ will die. There was no gin in that fight at all for your Onyx, but they were still able to pick up a kill. Yeah, even with the Zillion Ultimate, when Orianna made her way over, you were pretty sure that Ash was going to die regardless. Arfen didn't get that, um, didn't get that uh, lantern within close enough range to hear Q2 to spam click it as soon as he came up, and I think it might have even timed out by the time he actually made his way back up from that death, so... It was a nicely good, nice rotation coming out from ESG and a good stun from uh, Phones to set that up after Keepers verdicting the entire minion wave away. Let's go look, take a look at Vision, by the way, because there's been some good deep vision coming out from Iguano, especially in that top side red jungle. They're looking to really make sure that their siege on the top lane tier one, oh sorry, top lane tier two and mid lane tier two, it feels pretty safe to make those kind of plays, especially on that top lane tier two with the way that those vision, uh, that vision has been set up. Uh, everything else is kind of kind of blank. A lot of defensive vision coming out from Euronics at this point in time. Knowing they're probably on the back foot, they've got uh, good defensive vision in their, both their blue and red side jungle. So they're looking to keep picks on those rotations coming out from uh, Iguana. You know what I find interesting? The naming of Zillion's ultimate and Echo's ultimate. Because right? Echo's ultimate is called Chrono Break and Zillion's ultimate is called Chrono Shift. Now, Echo goes back in time, so he shifts backwards. Whereas Zillion breaks sort of the bonds of death by bringing someone back to life. So I think it should be the other way around. What a, what a clever and interesting point, Sonar. I completely agree. It's a bit like Jin with the captive audience and deadly flourish. So when he puts a plant down and it, like, it's the little circle on the ground, that's called captive audience. And deadly flourish is when he does his long range W, which tries to, you know, catch someone out. So that should be captive audience. And deadly flourish should be the uh, little flower on the ground because it's flourishing. Hey ho, doesn't matter, mate. Anyway, we're going to see a little bit of pressure from Iguana as they push in. The other two names, just uh, like, now that I'm on this run, I'm going to continue. Thresh ultimate should not be called the box. It should be called the threshold. And here it comes down. Obvious caught out. Tries to repel up. Fennec not able to get the knockdown. There's the Enchanticus Lara as well. On towards Kaku doesn't catch him out. And finally, Nami's ultimate shouldn't be called the tidal wave, it should be called the tsunami because if you can get a pun in a name, you should put the pun in the name. So guys, you were asking about um, Infinity Edge and does that mean she gets 50% slow? Uh, what Infinity Edge do is mean, will mean that her version of critical strikes, which are the subsequent attacks with the... Uh, oh, we've got a shockwave though, so we'll talk about this in a second. Onto Obvious, Ignite goes down as well. Chrono Shift used onto Genix to get him back alive. Obvious dies to the Ignite and they get him out as well. Great play there by Iguana underneath the turret. Got caught out slightly with the shockwave. We're able to save the day with the Chrono Shift. Iguana's looking for this turret now as well. I mean, a 4v3 situation. Hook onto Kaku. There's an Oriana in the belly of that Tarm Kench as well. She has to flash away. Tarm goes down. Unbench the Kench, but at the moment he's not looking hench enough to carry this Euronix team. Lantern away by Arfan. This should be the turret falling as well. Iguana, two kills and a turret in quick succession. Oh, and they go for Magic Felix. He has flashed away. Phones comes in as well. Kex not quite able to get the engage he wanted with the flash proto belt it. And that's kind of what the Thresh does against that Jin Ultimate. will always bail someone out of a, a tricky situation if that's the case. Again, this is really, really solid stuff here from Iguana. You have that Chrono Shift. You know, if someone does get caught up in that Oriana Ultimate, they become a fairly susceptible target. You always have the Chrono Shift to bail them out. Really, really solid siege play coming out from Iguana at this point in time. I can answer that Ash, 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 uh, Ash question now. Um, so with Infinity Edge, uh, what happens is every time you critical strike as Ash, um, you, you don't you actually slow the target for more based on your critical strike chance. Um, but what actually Ash, Ash doesn't actually get extra damage from her critical strike. So she, she can actually still, in inverted commas, critical strike. So her critical strike chance does come into play. But every subsequent attack after her first basic attack on a target will deal more damage based on your critical strike chance. And if you get Infinity Edge, it's one plus. Um, your bonus critical strike damage. So I think Infinity Edge gives you, what, 50% extra bonus critical strike damage? Um, so basically, 
You still get increase. You still get critical strike damage on Ash, but she always crits after the first basic attack. If she actually critical strikes, so if she actually gets that RNG critical strike, she slows for more. I think that's the way it works. You think that's the way it works? I have no idea. You're the color customer, man. You know, it, it sounded confident enough that I believe you. And that's the important thing. Now, Iguana's looking to defend this top lane turret, but it's only Genax here. Not really going to have too much defense against three members of Euronix. Pops down a couple of bombs. Doesn't quite get the stun. Will wave clear, though. Makes it a bit more difficult for Euronix. They're going to stay around. Of course, turrets take a little bit longer to kill, and they don't have but, minions but around. But the problem is, is you've just given so much time to siege onto this bottom lane tier 2 as well. I mean, look, Phones has to use the Keeper's Verdict, but that only gets away the Rek'Sai. You've then got Arfen and Ket still just wailing in on this turret. No one able to instantaneously respond. So you trade a tier 1 in the top lane in return for a tier 2 in the bot lane that opens up the entire blue side jungle around the dragon pit as well. Vision will come thick and fast right now for Iguana. And it looks like Frenic's going to want to play off. Double the knock up. Hook. Here comes Arfen. Repel away from the hook. And Chardacus Arrow cleanse straight away. But obvious. Doesn't have a cleanse to get away from Kex. Iguana pull at the trigger once more. And they pick up the kill on obvious. Really great play. Wonderful rotation coming out from these guys. And uh, like we said, it was just playing off the back of that Ash Arrow from sieging onto the Tier 2. They're going to go straight towards Baron here. Maybe a slightly risky play, but with Kex and Genax, they might be able to zone away. It looks like they're not even going to go for it. They're just going to try and bait this one out. It's a Baron bait indeed. There's a, there's a ward in the back of Baron Pit though, so it uh, doesn't, doesn't really work too well when there's a ward just spotting out whether or not you're doing the Baron. At the moment, the gold is pretty pretty darn even. It's only 2,000 between the two teams. Less than 10%, which makes it pretty close across the board. Let's have a look at item spikes. Ash almost has the infinity edge. Got Rod of Ages finished on Gen X. It's got, I want to say, seven stacks on that, but our, our camera is a little bit fuzzy as we're just taking the feed away. Zonya's just finished on Kex. So he's going to start looking towards these fights. And it is a Cloud Drake up second. First one was an Ocean, which went over to Iguana. This looks like it's going to be a pretty easy cloud for Euronix. Or oh, obvious stunned up. Here's Arfen as well. Doesn't land the hook as Kaku devours the Elise. You know, they say you eat a spider in his sleep. Well, Kaku did it deliberately this time. He gets obvious out of the fight. Yeah, so that was, uh, again, all this blue side vision put down for Iguana, they they aren't content to capitalize immediately on things that they feel like a low priority. I guess their they're, they're thinking could be, well, we don't necessarily need Cloud or um, Ocean Drake, therefore why risk a potential fight around that area with the Orianna? Why, get, why group up into a pit where we could potentially become vulnerable? Look at ESG, though, um, Phones. He's actually got the Mercury Treads. He's got the Spectre's Cow and some health behind him. And you'll see Kex now probably going to start to struggle to actually split push. What Kex is going to have to do is find positions with his Teleport to be able to come in and impact team fights because that's where he's going to have his value. He's not going to be able to split versus Poppy uh, this late into the game, at least easily anyway, especially only sitting on a, a Proto Belt and a, uh, and a Zonya's. So you'll see him, for the most part, just try and clear waves as best as possible. And most of his impact is going to become uh, off basically capitalizing on an ash arrow or should the ash arrow fail try and make a, a team fight happen regardless it's difficult to make the team fight happen if the ash arrow fails if it gets something out of the enemy team perhaps you can follow up with the cannon and with the rexai or arthur always has the possibility of landing a godly hook as well but thresh cannon and rexai are all more uh, used for follow-up engage rather than initial engage. Thresh, perhaps the only one there who has true initial engage for sure. himself. Um, I want to answer the question. I want to ask why, why do you not see Varus and Misfortune in the AD carry position? The problem with Varus is a lot of his kit is loaded into his piercing arrow. So if you think as an AD carry, you're spending most of your time charging your Q and trying to land it, that's less time having su a sustained damage output as an AD carry. Um, so you think most of your time is better spent as an AD carry just landing basic attacks, which makes you a true sort of solid late game AD carry. We have a fight here though, Sona. Here they go, up and hook onto Magic Felix, and that is a dead Oriana, no escape at all for him. They use the arrow, they use the hook, they use the double bombs, and Magic Felix just has no way of getting out of it. I think it's risky to maybe start Baron because of the fact that Elise is still available, but they don't think so. They're trusting in Frenic, and I think Arfen basically is going to sit here and look to hook or stop any kind of potential um, uh, play over the wall with the repel for Elise. This could just be a give up here right now for uh, for. As well, Obvious has been hooked up here. Comes Kets to try and stop Obvious. Flash in by Bones. I'm not sure what he was trying to do. Maybe he used to keep his verdict or something. It comes out, but we will see Frenic taking the Baron. They kill Obvious off as well. 
and Iguanas are starting to take a stranglehold on this matchup. Yeah, they're looking very good right now. So, no, we believe this is the best of three. So, uh, should they win this, they'll go through to the grand final. I also want to pick up on the point about uh, at the back of that Baron. We saw how that was done. A very nice zoning coming out from uh, Arfan. It basically neutralized the fact that Obvious was still alive. By taking out Magic Felix, you use that. That stops them being able to take this turret too quickly. Genax did use the Chrono Shift on himself as well. We'll spiel up PQ as they get out of there. But yeah, that shockwave was pretty strong. You've still got a big magic Felix, you know. He has been caught out, but he's sitting on 238 farm. And uh, the chrono shift is on about a 60 second cooldown at the moment. So we'll be up relatively quickly as well. So what I was saying off the back of that, they could go for Baron as long as they were able to zone obvious. Oh, we have a we have a replay here. So, so look, I mean, look, there's nothing needs to be said about this. It's just a absolute cacophony of CC, like CC coming from every different direction. There was no way that Magi Felix was surviving. What this allows is for Iguana to then take Baron, knowing the major impact tool of a shockwave is not going to have an impact because Oriana is dead. And in a, in a pit, Shockwave is very easy to land on high priority targets like the Baron Pit. And then just by zoning Obvious away with the Thresh and the Kennen, it allowed Ash and Frenic basically to just focus down that Baron very quickly. So it's really nicely played by Iguana. Um, the, I want to answer the MF as well. We talked about Varus. MF is not seen mainly for the same reason. Very much a caster AD carry. She's got a little bit of a shorter range compared to most AD carries as well. Um, so until I think you see sort of combos with her ultimate come through again we won't see mf in the eddie carry position believe we saw her at worlds obviously as support mainly as a counter to zyra though yeah. i just want to say kex is channeling his inner haunter as he has an na heartbeat at the moment yeah uh, the the things on the side of the screen so the lower number usually or the one with the little squiggly line above it is their resting heartbeat which was taken before the game started the second one is their current heartbeat and you can see a lot of these players on edge anything above 100 is above normal it means that they're pretty adrenaline fueled in these games they're looking for the inhibitor towers as well it's just kets pushing down the bottom lane hasn't got that blade of the ruin king that you were talking about previously instead going to what yeah. appears to be a rabidon's next I much prefer that because I don't think they win through split push anyway, so why pander towards trying to split push versus the poppy? You can see that he's not getting any damage done in this situation, he's just trying to push the wave as best as possible. Where Kex is going to have his input is going to be in a team fight situation, so, well, Rabadon's just makes a lot more sense. So he means he can have... He breaks the inhibitor line though, in, in that yeah. 1v1. With the Baron buff minions, it's a relatively easy thing to do. Exactly. They'll now bring the rest of Iguanas into this mid lane to look to see if they can get this inhibitor turret down as well. So people ask why MF counters Zyra. I know it's got nothing to do with this match. I know a lot of people might not know from the world situation as well. Um, we're going to see a potential fight break out. I, yeah, I'll talk, talk we'll about, talk about it, it in a minute after this inhibitor push has finished. Bound off minions in here. Euronic's trying to grasp for some sort of hold on this game. But at the moment, Iguano are giving them nothing. Hook misses onto phones. Deadly flourish on Frenic. They've got the inhibitor and Iguana will just back away. Happy enough with their work for today. So actually, chat has answered the question for me. Um, basically, make it rain is incredibly impactful when you max it as a poking tool. And Zyra can't actually get close to use her grasping roots or proc any of her plants. And also, someone came up with Reddit. Uh, there was a nice little uh, thread that we saw a while ago that um, MF's love tap means that she's able to beat out those plants from um, Zyra a little bit more readily than most other supports because you deal a little bit extra damage on your first basic attack and you can deal with them from range. So uh, you, basically you just can't get close to Misfortune because Make It Rain slows Zyra down and especially with um, something like Thunderlords, just, you just are unable to trade as Zyra which means you, you just get pushed in very easily. Well, at the, and not, not too relevant in this game but still interesting facts with Excoundrel paying off dividends. Hey, it's, it's, it's I'm going to renew is, my subscription for another season Excoundrel. Just, just text STOP to uh, 81199, which actually actually don't text that because I believe that's the Radio 1 number. Um, <laughs> Did you actually just give them the Radio 1? <laughs> okay, well, Infinity Edge, Phantom Dancer second on HeQ and that Runan's finished. It's only two completed items on Cedrian, so he's lagging behind slightly with only Essence Reva and that Rapid Fire Cannon. At the moment, HeQ is doing the majority of the work in teamfights for Iguanas, and I apologize for the T-Tours that are going on at the moment. We are not doing the camera work, and it's just kind of jumping all over the place. Yeah, unfortunately, we are doing a live broadcast of a live broadcast. So this is actually the broadcast that's going out in Germany. Oh, Tournament Realm, I'm going to give some credit to the cameraman. As Sona will know, Tournament Realm, if you leave it on directed camera, 
will go crazy yeah, because there's just it, it basically this is a little interesting point about the client the spectator mode on the normal client has got three minutes to formulate where the best position for the camera is because it can basically look at the action for three minutes and say well where's most impactful on the tournament realm it has no minutes it has literally zero seconds it will just jump to the most impactful thing and if you've got several impactful things going on it'll just spam between the two of them that it will and sometimes what we think is impactful is not what the client thinks curtain called down turret dead phones jumps in shockwave only on frenic redemption comes down as well we'll give frenic a bit of healing and now IGE can look for the re-engage if they want it. Fennec is down to half HP. But the rest of ESG will get caught out. Devour on Kaku. There's the hook as well into the box. Kaku drawn back. And Kaku has fallen. Now Magic Felix needs to keep himself alive. Has used the shockwave already. This will be the second inhibitor falling. Kex is low as well though. And he will get taken out by phones. The inhibitor still alive for the time being. Fennec flashes out. His phones though knocks EQ back. Chrono shift on him. Have they got the lantern? Have they got the way out for the ash? Flashes onto the lantern and gets himself out. Arthan with the great lantern placement means that iguanas don't lose too much out of the push. Arthan bailing everybody out left, right, and center with these lanterns looking incredibly good so far. Iguana, like you said, Sona, have stepped up their game in this new patch. They have looked one of the strongest teams in the Meisterschaft compared to their competition. And, you know, Ironix Gaming, who traditionally have won pretty much every cup you know, all the Meisterschaft stuff has been kind of the Euronics gaming glory. Could be knocked out by this new team put together for this season. And Iguana just looking so good at this point in time. Uh, and again, Baron coming up in the next minute, or oh, well, five seconds. Uh, this could be an easy secure for Iguana with both the bot lane and top lane pushing in. I don't know how quickly they're going to be able to respond. This could be it for Euronics gaming. This could be Iguana sealing their place. You would still have a strong pick composition. Let's have another look at this fight. So Hiku takes out Kaku to start it off. Yeah, so he basically heals to dodge the cocoon and the potential dissonance coming out from Magi Felix. Uh, and this is just them securing the inhibitor. I think you've seen most of the impactful stuff already by this point. Uh, this is a, basically a, a nice dive in onto HQ. They do end up proccing the Zillion ultimate, which could have been their potential mistake, but the flash onto the lantern and Arfan pulls his AD carry to safety. Arthur has, Arthur has been very, very good so far on this particular champion. Be a quick bam and take for them as well. He could walk across the wall. Only that single inhibitor standing between Iguana and the grand finals of the ESL Meisterschaft. Meisterschaft. I'm going to... I'll work out a way to pronounce that later on today. My, Meisterschaft. Shaft. Meisterschaft. Maybe I've always, I always than... thought it was Meisterschaft. Probably. Anyway, this will be the inhibitor going low. Inhibitor turret, sorry, going low as Fennec tanks it up. Almost going to fall straight away. No real defense here by Euronics. They're giving this up. They're saying we'll defend under our Nexus Towers. That will be our last stand. That will be our Helm's Deep. That will be the fight of Pelennor Fields. This is going to be the second inhibitor falling as they go for the push. Has only just respawned. They get it quickly. Iguana's looking for the win. They've already lost one Nexus Tower here, actually. As the minions took that down. Euronics only have one turret between them and losing this series and IGE are knock knock knocking on the door to the grand finals curtain call used Kex knocks back Bones jumps in as well but the curtain call only going to connect on towards Fennec IGE go back in for the fight they want this Kex is just around the corner does have that flash up as well with the slicing maelstrom his heartbeat may be dead but I can assure you that Kennen is very much alive hook misses from Arfan Neuronic still defending their final nexus tower and IGE not ready to pull the trigger yet. Well, they don't need to pull the trigger because the minions can pull the trigger for them as, you know, if, they, if they can wait that long. They've got that Baron. If they can try and get those Baron buff minions pushing in with the, the inhibitor turrets, you know, they only need to, you need to wait a certain amount of time before double super minions start crashing in against uh, Euronix Gaming. They don't need to wait too long for that to happen. I think bot lane inhibitor is due to respawn or have they, or have they just taken it again? I they can't remember. They just took it. So top uh, lane so they, will be the next one to respawn. They, they, they do not need to wait very long at all. There's no way that you can defend against this much onslaught and with the Baron on the top of it as well. They're Here going. comes Kex onto Magic Felix. He will cleanse away. Bones the front line now for ESG into the GA. Euronix holding on for dear life, but Obvious doesn't have much life left. Great redemption as well to heal up EQ. Bones caught out Arthur with the chrono ship. The Nexus Tower has fallen. And Iguana just wipe away the opposition. PQ takes the Quadra. Iguana take the series. And they are through to the Grand Finals.
It definitely was a best of three, Soda, because they are <laughs> celebrating. They've knocked out Euronix Gaming, and Iguana are in the finals. Euronix, one of the favorites to take the Meisterschaft, fail in a 2-1 extravaganza versus Iguana, the huddle coming through. They didn't need to do any work at the end there. Super Minions did most of it for them. But one little tiny play that I wanted to point out, and it's been often all the time. Kennen commits. Proto Bell ultimate. He's in a bad situation. Arfan is there again with that lantern. Brings him back. Brings them to a five-man squad to protect that Ash. And Ash is able to just run through the enemy team. Brilliant play by Iguana. Playing very nicely around that Ash. And both times they managed to make it work. Fantastic play from these guys. But you can see Euronix. They are sad. You know, they expected to do better than this. But they need to keep their heads up. They're still a fantastic team. They've still won multiple... Um, versions of the ESL Meisterschaft before this, but this is the one that everyone wants to win. You get that challenger scene qualifier spot from winning as well as a nice sum of money. And Iguana are one series away from finding themselves in the challenger, uh, in the challenger series qualifier. That they are. It's just incredibly close between uh, the teams throughout this entire tournament. Uh, Iguana Esports really risen through the ranks and beating out that old stalwart of the German scene in Euronics Gaming. Next up though, it's Mysterious Monkeys versus Eyes on You. And uh, Eyes on You, the only team yet to win yeah, a well, cup, actually Jungs consistently getting in second place. We do have an interview with our fan here, but we don't understand German. So this is going to be an interesting one. Should we just try and do it between ourselves, this time, I, I mean, we, we know our fan. Let's just, uh, let's just try and translate. Let's do what I did for the Japanese stream and just translate. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, big game for you there, our fan. Uh, you picked the Thresh, you've risen up through the ranks. Uh, How do you feel? All these guys are scrubs. I'm an absolute beast, so it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, basically best Thresh on this planet. I really sort of gained all my skills from the UK scene, so I've just transitioned that across. And as you can see now, I'm the best player alive. And I'm saying some more stuff after that as well. I'm, yeah, I'm just saying stuff at this point in time. He definitely said something about Elise there. I heard Elise. I landed a godly hook onto the Elise, was able to just, you know, do my job. It's exactly what I have to do. And uh, the rest of the team were able to follow up on my uh, really good plays. So next up, uh, yes, yeah, so you be, I mean, you beat out Euronix. Nix does pulls 73, apparently, which is an interesting statistic as well. What do you think about Nix does pulls 73? Now 76. 80 now. Eighty. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's now 88, so oh, basically... Like, there's so many Nyx does. It's now minus, minus one. one. <laughs> it's now minus one. I can see that Arthur was... fell quite was... quickly through the floor and did Nyx does balls. It was like the economy after Donald Trump got elected. Anyway, we are just uh, waiting for this interview to be over. I think we should stop our, our yeah, yeah, interview translation. translations. Uh, if you do want to watch in German, you can switch over to the German stream, which I believe is on ESL underscore Summoners in. Uh, there's quite a few people over there watching it as well. Next game up is Eyes on You versus Mysterious Monkey. Eyes on You are the only team not to have won a cup throughout the entire ESL Meisterschaft. How do you feel they'll they'll fare into Mysterious Monkeys? I've always felt like they're uh, been like almost second best in most situations. So I, I keep an eye on Eyes on You. I don't think they're sort of counted out of this just yet. But Mysterious Monkeys, they have beaten Euronix Gaming before. They're also a very, very solid team. I think this is going to be a close series again. Uh, cheer for Iguana Esports. We could hear a little cheer there. And I believe we'll be back after a couple of quick messages. Uh, yeah, we'll be, right, we'll be right back, guys. Make sure you stay tuned. <laughs> See ya. Mysterious Monkeys versus Eyes on You up next.